Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to January of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So guys, please keep in mind that this is a general reading. Yes, uh, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so nice to meet you. Welcome. Uh, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, let me know how you feel about this, how this is resonating with you down in the description box below. Smash that like button for me because it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, I encourage you guys to stay through to the end and also leave me a comment in the comments section down below. I said that already, but oh, subscribe if you haven't done so already, yeah? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so we're going to get into this for you, Sagittarius, for the month of January of 2022. Now, I know a lot of you, especially on the Sagittarian side of things, have started really like started connecting with me or found me back in August of 2019. I talk about this all the time with um, that big that reading that I did where you guys like kind of made me cry. which was a beautiful thing. But um, and, but I want to say I want to encourage you guys to follow along, to continue to follow along. I know things are a little bit different now that I'm now I have this new format. If you know of me or you've been following me, then you're probably already familiar with this format because you may have seen one of the videos that I put out for the month of January already. It's definitely a different format. The biggest difference is that I am focusing my efforts in true sidereal astrology right now. So with that said, and with the different with there being a difference between sidereal astrology and tropical astrology, you in terms of sidereal astrology, you may not be a Sagittarian anymore. Um, not that that changed. It actually was that you were never really a Sagittarian, if that applies to you, but this is just consciousness is shifting. So anyway, what I'm what I'm what I'm saying that I, I, I say that to say, even though you may have resonated with me and my readings as a Sagittarian in the past, that doesn't, and, and if you were to look at the sidereal system and you were to find that, say, your sun sign or whatever isn't Sagittarius any longer, it's actually like Scorpio, or actually it, in this situation, it would most likely be Ophiuchus if it does change. Um, I, encourage you, I encourage you to listen anyway. Um, the first half of this session is going to be me speaking to Sagittarius rising from the sidereal point of view. And then after that, we are going to get into the just general card pull for the energy of Sagittarius, which is not meant to have anything to do with any specific practice, whether we're talking about tropical astrology, sidereal astrology, or even Vedic astrology. It's just a general pull for the energy of Sagittarius. So even though I'm speaking mostly from the point of view of sidereal astrology, and you don't necessarily resonate with that, but you still resonate with Sagittarius energy, then stay mostly for the for the second half of this reading. Timestamps can be found in the description box below, okay? But we are gonna start the reading off by speaking to Sagittarius rising from the sidereal point of view. Yes? Again, I encourage you guys to stick around and see how this resonates with you, okay? All right, enough rambling. Let's get into this. So, Sagittarius rising. Hello, welcome to January 2022. So now, with everything that I said, wait, hold on, sorry guys, hold on for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, with everything that I said in the beginning of the reading here, talking about how I'm focusing in sidereal astrology and you may not necessarily be a Sagittarius anymore, blah, 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 blah. As I was looking through your chart for the month, Saggy, uh, I was recognizing that even all the way back to August of 2019, when I did that infamous video, uh, channeling, reading, it, it's that that energy still applies to what we're going to be talking about here for you in the month of January 2022. Um, and that kind of makes sense because even back then in 2019, even though at that time as a reader, as a channeler, I was flip-flopping between sidereal astrology and tropical astrology and this, that, going back and forth, but I was still very much in alignment with sidereal because I was even aligning with my sidereal placements. I was I was relating more to my, idea, my sidereal placements. But at that time, I was going through a little bit of an identity crisis because sidereal astrology is not that popular. And you guys would be kind of surprised at the amount of not only flack that I've gotten for trusting the process, trusting my intuition and going and focusing on this, um, this practice, 
not just the flack that I've gotten, but some of the blatant disrespect that people throw out there in terms of like somebody left in the comments a few days ago, I don't know, somewhere, I don't even remember what message it was, but somebody left in the comments that they were like, Ophiuchus sounds like a disease or an infection or blah, blah, blah. They could have just left it out, left that out. And I'm sitting here like, well, the Babylonians really did just leave it out for like arbitrary reasons, but whatever. So, <laughs> so anyway, what I'm picking up on here for at least, well, no, all of Sagittarius, but Sagittarius rising specifically, what we've been talking about over the last two almost three years now is reflecting in your chart here. All right. So with that said, Saggy, let's get to your chart here. What you are looking at is the chart for Sagittarius rising for January of 2022. Now, the reason why I'm saying that, um, you know, all that we've been talking about is still relevant here is the fact that the major things to, to that we're focusing on this month being not just the new moon that the month started with, but also the conjunction between the sun and Pluto, and also the, the subsequent or the, the full moon that follows that the next day. All of this, Sagittarius, is happening, Sagittarius rising at least, is happening in your first house. As you can see right here, we have Pluto right here. Venus is retrograde through your first house. The sun is in your sign of Sagittarius in the first house. If you happen to be a Sagittarius sun and rising, you are most likely feeling this a lot. Okay, um, but but I but anyway, um, the thing about this Sag rising is that you know all of this is happening in your first house, which is ruled by Aries, and then the other big thing about this time period for us is where Uranus is. Uranus is in Aries right now, currently retrograde is going to be retrograde until the 18th of January. But as I've been saying throughout this whole time, Sag, Uranus retrograde through Aries is helping us to reshape our identities and our sense of self. For you, Sagittarius rising, Uranus is in your fifth house, ruled by Leo and the sun. This is your house of self-expression, okay? And what I've and the title that I've got for you for this month, Sagittarius, as you could see from the title being here on YouTube, right? Uh, the title for you as a result of this is empowering your new identity. Because regardless as to whether you resonate as a Sagittarius rising or a Sagittarius sun or moon, or you're not even a Sagittarius anymore in sidereal astrology, but you still resonate with this energy, this is absolutely connected to the shift in your identity, to the change from past circumstances, um, the change from the dark, heavy, destructive, um, negative, whatever past that you are rising out of the depths from, and you have been rising out of the depths from, okay? Now, so let's see. Uh, the, the other thing about this, Sagittarius, is the fact that right now, this month, your Mars and you, uh, Mars, excuse me, Mars is in your 12th house currently at this moment, as of January 6th, when this reading is being recorded, Mars has made its way into Ophiuchus, which is, I def, which I feel for the collective is a part of healing, healing the masculine energy, healing your masculine energy and starting that healing and restructuring process for Mars to link up with Venus the masculine and the feminine to link up together and hit that final point of conjunction with Pluto on March 3rd. So something that I hadn't, I, I didn't really think to say up until maybe yesterday was the fact that wherever the sun, wherever the sun and Pluto conjunction this month is happening for you in your chart, that's where, that's the same place that it's that is going to happen for you when Mars, Venus, and Pluto link up on the 3rd of March. Pluto is really not going to be moving very far between now and then. Pluto is the furthest out there. It takes the longest. I think it takes about 270 something, almost 300 years to make a complete circle, to make a, uh, to, to circle the sun once, right? At least 270 some odd 
earth years okay of our years uh so it so this conjunction between sun mars and pluto often the third of march is happening in the same place that the sun and pluto are coming conjunct for you for all of us but for you specifically sagittarius that is happening in your first house again your house of self your house of personal identity now what i was saying was that mars is in your 12th house and what i what has come out here sag while i was starting to channel for the energy of mars is temperance and then and also keep in mind that in terms of the tarot sagittarius temperance represents you but what i was channeling when i first saw yep what yep okay what i was channeling when i first looked at the fact that well when i was looking at everything i was just feeling like this conjunction between the sun and Pluto is really going to help to start empower you again, empowering your new identity. But then when I, it really came into focus, when I looked at Mars, because Mars is in the 12th house and the 12th house is ruled by Pisces, um, which is, which shares rulership of your ruling planet, Jupiter, although Pisces has an extra ruler in Neptune, but okay. Um, Mars is in the 12th house ruled by Pisces. The 12th house is all about the collective, but and so is the 11th house, okay? But when you get into the 12th house, the 12th house is um, is where you get to the real emotional side of the collective, the real the real deeper aspects of collective energy. Often the 12th house is seen as the house of God. Um, strong spirituality comes through in the house of God. In, in the 12th house. Um, the 12th house is also about perfection, just like its opposite, the the sixth house, which is ruled by, v, I'm sorry, Virgo, which is ruled by Virgo. Virgo is also very much about perfection. So is the sixth house. But when you're in the sixth house, in the realm of Virgo, this is perfection on a physical level, which can get pretty dicey on a three-dimensional level, which can get pretty dicey. And that's where you can run into problems with perfectionism, right? On a, in, a, in a physical sense. But when you're in the 12th house, this is spiritual perfection. So this is coming to terms with, or the realization of, or the understanding of the fact that you are perfect just as God, source creator, designed you, okay? So for you specifically, Sagittarius, you have Mars transiting through your 12th house. And that is helping to bring healing and balance into to you in terms of your sense of self-identity, okay? Because Mars is ruled, or Mars is the ruler of Aries and you have Uranus retrograde transiting through Aries, helping us gain and restructure our sense of self. For you specifically, Ophiuchus, this is you bringing balance into your life here. Let me, um, let me switch the scene so that you can see the cards a little better. This is you bringing balance into your life in terms of the differing of opinion or the how you have been at odds with yourself, how there has been um, miscommunication maybe between you and others. Um, you have been misidentified in ways that you have been forced to accept certain beliefs about yourselves or beliefs about reality or been at, been at, on the receiving end of imposition of energies beliefs understandings traumas imposed these have been imposed upon you by other people you have a chance this month as Mars is transiting through your 12th house, through Pisces and through Ophiuchus, which is a very healing sign, you have the opportunity to heal that. Then you have the star. But not only heal this, uh, Sagittarius, get in alignment with the truth of who you really are in the face of what the collective or the people around you tell you who you are really truly meant to be, the perfection of yourself on a soul level, on a spiritual level, on a godly level, even for some of you that are really take it that far, right? The perfection of who you are as you were made to be in God's image, in the universe's image, in God's source creator's image, not who other people tell you to be. 
or not who you've been made out to be is what I'm hearing. Not what society has forced you or pigeonholed you into being. At the bottom of the deck now, Sagittarius, you have judgment. It is time for this. It is time for you as Mars is transiting through, uh, through uh, the 12th house. It is time for you to emerge like the phoenix from the ashes risen, emerge from the ashes of the old that is you, or excuse me, the old version of you, the old versions that were you, okay? And the sun conjuncting with Pluto at this time is empowering that, is giving your soul that infusion, that shot to stand erect and say, this is who I am. And that, not, that cannot be denied. What do we have here? Something just fell out of the deck. The Knight of Wands. This is another Sagittarian energy, okay? Very Sagittarian energy. But to me, the Knight of Wands is saying right now to you, or this is speaking to your drive. This is because that came out as I was speaking to the sun conjuncting with Pluto, empowering your soul, okay? Yes, the Knight of Wands now to the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so caution. Caution, Sag. Um, first, what I want to say about the Knight of Pentacles here is this is not something a real I'm hearing this is not a realization that is going to be accepted overnight. Okay. You can't just expect yourself to wake up one day and say and feel empowered enough to say, okay, I'm gonna stand in the truth of my power now and just or the truth of my power and or the truth of who I truly, truly am, who I know myself to be on a deep level. And you would know that because you've been doing that work to uncover that, right? Okay. But you can't just wake up one day and feel so emboldened to stand in the power of it in the center of that and own that and then just automatically accept everyone around or uh, 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 expect everyone around you to accept it. This this changeover is in fact going to be a process, and you may you may experience a lot of resistance, a lot of flack, especially from people who don't really know who you are, but then stand there and try to pro proclaim they know you better than you know your own self, which is a load of malarkey. But anyway. You can't just expect that to happen overnight. It's an over, it's a, it's a, a it's a timely process. People are really going to have to get, people are going to really have to take the opportunity, Sagittarius, to get to know the real you, who it is you truly are underneath all of the trauma, okay, underneath all the damage. And if they don't take that time, they don't want to take that time, or they just can't see the truth of who you are or who it is you're emerging as, don't fight them on that because it's really not your responsibility to convince anything, anybody of anything. And that is where Sagittarius energy can run into some trouble because, and it's not necessarily that Sagittarius is so egoic that they think that, you know, well, my way is right just because it's, it's it, it, often Sagittarian and Sagittarians can get into trouble with that because, because they try, they try so hard to get people to see things a different way mainly because it's so exciting to them or because they believe in it or something. And it's not like they're trying to impose anything on anyone. It's just that they're excited, they're fiery, you know, they, they're they passionate about it. Um, so, and people might try to use that against you, whatever. But the fact of the matter here is Sagittarius, I really want you with this Knight of Pentacles here, I want you to stay rooted in the truth of why this is happening for you because it's happening because of a need for greater reciprocity. Six of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath that is an eight, the Eight of Swords to the Seven of Swords, okay? To the Six of Cups even, which talks about the past. But what this is saying here for you Sagittarius is, you're moving in this direction right now because of the fact that you desire greater reciprocity and the cage that you have been in is destructive and deceitful. Some of you are wanting to influence others to break out of this deception as well. 
Uh, but yeah, you're really going to need to hold your ego back on that one. Strength. You can't force anybody into anything they're not ready for. That doesn't mean that you can't make the information available to them, but trying to force someone to see things your way is really a fruitless endeavor. Sagittarius, it's not going to get you anywhere. Instead, just keep moving forward in the direction that you are being guided to move forward in eight of wands. Okay. But this is a really pivotal time for you, Sagittarius, especially Especially those of you that have really been resonating with the shift Sagittarius has been going through that I've been channeling and reading for us for the almost for like two and a half years now. If it, it, this this feels like the moment, Sag, where you are ready to really stand in your power. I know that we've been saying for the last year that you know you're starting to get it, you're starting to feel it, you're really starting to make this transformation, but just because I mean, it had to happen on an energetic level for you first before it could really take shape in the physical. And what I'm feeling for you now, Sagittarius, is that the sun and the sun Pluto conjunction is really a point of empowerment. Okay. Is it, it, actually what I'm hearing, Sagittarius, is this is that point in the situation where now your masculine energy can really step forward in the truth of who it is that you are and not only step forward and stand solidly in there but work to defend pro protect and move forward from that position to where then once we hit that conjunction between pluto mars and venus that's when both masculine and feminine will be moving together in terms of this because there still is a little bit of healing and realignment and readjustment that needs to happen of course that's going to be happening over the course of venus's retrograde energy uh retrograde motion through sagittarius none other than right Okay, the next card that's come out here for you, Sagittarius, in terms of all this is the Hierophant in reverse. And let me tell you something, that is like such a welcoming energy because you're really breaking free from the status quo. Again, I hope I'm saying this well or effectively enough, but yes, Sagittarius, you have been breaking free from the status quo all along. Everything that we've been talking about that you've been resonating with, you have been going through it, but now is the time to really break out and I guess it's similar to what I was saying for Virgo, right? Because Virgo reading this month was about coming out of the closet. For some of you, there really is a level of being seen and being known for who it is you truly are now. Yes, in, 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 in an effort to move forward, Six of Swords here, all right? So again, this this infusion of power between the sun pluto conjunction and then even the the full moon the day after that this is really giving you the power to stand up to to fully step into that power to say this is who i really am this is the direction that i'm going in and i'm shoving off and i'm leaving i'm leaving the old circumstances behind okay this is so beautiful anything else actually <laughs> I didn't even mean for this to happen, but look, now the King of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. That absolutely speaks to this level of you understanding who it is you truly are and fully stepping into that power, fully embodying that power, Sag. So beautiful. I'm going to close this out, this part of the reading out for you uh, with the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and then we're going to shift gears into the more general part of the reading. Yeah, here we go. Five shuffles? Okay, one. Two. I really want to do three. I want to do three. So this is two. Wait, which is more appropriate though? Oh, uh, actually, okay, Sagittarius, I'm going to do four shuffles here because there is a level of st stability and foundation that you're stepping into. So let's, let's do that. All right. So this is three for Sagittarius. How can we close out this part of the reading for Sagittarius rising? And this is four. All right. Closing message for Sagittarius rising here, please, spirit. There it is, right? <laughs> oh, Sagittarius, I love this. And you know what? So why I'm laughing so much is because this is like... There is something about you with this conjunction between the sun and Pluto and you really empower and this really empowering this new sense of self. There is something so unapologetic about this for you. 
And rightfully so, Sag. I mean, you worked so hard to get here. Why would you feel regret, shame, or remorse for stepping into the truth of who you really are, right? What you're really meant to be doing on this planet, who you're really meant to be showing up as, right? So you're <laughs> fucking, I, I fucking love you, Sag. This, the closing message is card number six, which does relate to this six of swords and the six of pentacles that came out, but it's, it is what it is. Sag. It is what it is. <laughs> I mean, I... There's really nothing else for me to say there. Because you get it. I really feel like you get it. It literally... It, it, look, y'all. It is what it is, man. I mean, yeah. Some shit happened in the past. Yeah, that was me back then. Yeah, that's what I was... That, that's what I was told I needed to be. Or what I was shaped into because of the... The, the narcissism or because of the nature of my, my, my relationship with my family growing up. But that was then and this is now. And sorry, not sorry, but it is what it is. You can either take it or you can leave it. Either way, I'm not going to stop being it. I love you, Sagittarius. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second, regroup, and we will get into the general card pull for the energy of Sagittarius for January 22. Stay tuned. Alrighty, guys. So welcome to the second half of this reading. This is going to be a general energy reading for Sagittarius for the energy of Sagittarius for the month of January of 2022. Again, this part of the reading is I hope I'm using the right term for this. I, re I realize it's a, it's a religious, it, it, it refers to religion, but I I'm calling this the non-denominational part because this doesn't have to be for any specific um, astrological practice. This is literally just a general card pull for the energy of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or any other placement that you may have that you're curious about for the month of January. And also, this would be the situ this would be the side of the reading that's most applicable to someone that is watching or cross watching for a Sagittarian energy. Okay, so for the month of January 2022, Sagittarius. The main, um, the, the, the main title that I pulled for, or that I got for Sagittarius uh, is empowering uh, your new identity. Many of you resonate with me here on this channel, regardless as to whatever system you resonated with. I did say this in the beginning, but if you did, if you found yourself resonating with me in the past, um, with Sagittarius energy, even if that's from a tropical uh, tropical astrology point of view, you still could resonate with this energy here. And um, so there is definitely an energy of the conjunction between the sun and Pluto that is happening this month. Again, that's happening regardless as to whatever uh, 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 um, uh, shit, regardless as to whatever astrological practice you subscribe to. Uh, Undebatable. The sun is conjuncting with uh, with Pluto on the 17th of January, and that is really empowering us, it, regardless as to whatever sign it is for you for your practice. It's empowering us this month, and the big thing that I'm feeling for Sagittarius is that that's going to help empower this new identity that you've been in the process of coming into that we've been talking about for about two and a half years over here on this channel, right? I'm going to give this one more shuffle for you, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and or Crosswatcher. This is the Energy Oracle deck, yeah? So what messages do we have for Sagittarius for the month of January 2022? What's going on for Sagittarius energy? I heard the the empowerment process is happening, has started, okay? First card out, though, is anxiety. I feel like this is more... F uh, uh, what is this? I want to say this is more for the cross-watcher. Because I feel like you guys, if you are cross-watching for a Sagittarian energy right now, you feel this extreme shift that's happening within them. And I don't think they're being honest with you. Mm, let me not say it that way. I don't think they're being... 
upfront about it. Not that they're not being honest with you about it. Not even that, I don't even feel like they're really trying to be secretive about it. I feel like, and this is where also the anxiety could be coming from Sagittarius as well. I feel like this shift within you or this person is so extreme at times that it's causing anxiety. Not only is the Sagittarian feeling it, but the people around them that are closest to the Sagittarian, they're also feeling it and it's creating tension. It's creating fear, okay? You do have this anxiety. Now for the Sagittarian, this anxiety is directly related to how the people around you are going to accept or perceive of this new version of you, the new value that you hold in your life, okay? Again, this is affecting everybody, but Venus is retrograde right now. And it's going to be retrograde until sometime in Feptem uh, September. <laughs> it, sometime in January. Uh, shit. No, February. I'm sorry. Uh, sometime in February, uh, mid-month, I want to say. I haven't, I don't know if, I haven't looked right now. I don't remember off the top of my head. But Venus will be going direct soon. Um, sometime in February. But this Venus retrograde motion is helping us to redefine our values, which is helping us set ourselves right in alignment with the truth of who we are, okay? What else do we have for Sagittarius for this month of January 22? Maybe even this anxiety energy? Healer of ages. Yes. Healer of ages. Um, okay. All right. So Sagittarius, I feel like, especially with the conjunction between the sun and Pluto, that's going to help empower you and this change that you're making. Um, some of the anxiety that's coming through for the people around you, the people closest to around you, Sagittarius, that are feeling this shift within you are recognizing that there is, um, there's some reckoning. There's some reckoning that's going to come, that's coming for the damage that has been created. Okay. So this is mostly why there's this anxiety here. And of course the Sagittarian could be feeling it, but really you guys, I feel like this is for mostly the people around you. All right. Or maybe even the cross watcher that, that are watching this video for a Sagittarian specifically, like what the hell is going on with them? This is what's going on with them. There is some sort of rectifying, reconciling and healing that's going to need to happen throughout this energy. And quite frankly, Sagittarius, if they don't want to accept or they don't want to move forward or move on or heal from the damage, then that is their problem. You don't have to take them with you wherever it is you're going next, okay? You, re <laughs> you really don't. And then that's where the angel of strength comes in, okay, Sag? So yes, you're being empowered this month. Yes, you are definitely stepping into the new version of you. But with what I'm hearing now is with great power comes great responsibility. And... You are going to need to have the strength, Sagittarius, to walk away from what no longer serves you. And I know you've, you've been doing this for the last two and a half years. We've been talking about this like a, like a broken record nonstop. But now, now, it, now it's like when push comes to shove, what do you do? When it, at the end of the day, if you just have to walk away because they're not getting it, they don't want to get it, whatever, and I don't speak ill, I'm not speaking ill of anyone that stands in opposition to you, but this is very King of Swords energy. We're gonna get into some tarot in a second, but it's very King of Swords energy. And it's funny, Sag, because for Sag Rising, the closing message for Sagittarius Rising is, or was, it is what it is. And that's where the Angel of Strength comes in. Are, do you have the strength to stand in this power and really walk away if you have to? I believe you do this month, Sagittarius, because the conjunction between the sun and Pluto is infusing you with that extra sense of personal power, okay? Let's get into some tarot here. Five shuffles, one. Two. Three. Yeah, the moon wanted to pop out, but then the four of swords is coming with, I'm not sorry, not, I am sorry, but no, the four of wands comes with that. Um, so this is three. Uh, so Sagittarius, uh, with the moon and the four of wands, you're really just gonna have to stand in your stability and face the unknown from that place. Just because the moon is here and it's saying things are nebulous or saying things are unknown or, you know, you don't know how things are going to work out, that doesn't mean it's going to be bad. There may be some things that, you know, 
are less than savory. <laughs> okay, but it doesn't mean it's bad, okay? The moon is not necessarily a bad thing all the time. This is four. And this is five. You really just have to stand in your power. Oops. Ooh. Take it in reverse or upright? All right. Well, it is in reverse. The Ten of Cups came flying out in reverse uh, underneath. And then at the bottom of the deck so far, you do have the Knight of Cups. Um, so, okay, for my Sagittarian Risings, this is that 12th house energy. And I don't know if I, maybe I didn't say this as well as I should have or as effectively as I could have, but this is feeling like your alignment your sense of identity in terms of the realm of the collective or the people around you is false or has been false. Or there is something about your association with the people around you, the collective energies, 12th house energies. Keep in mind, Sagittarius rising, you, Mars is moving through your 12th house right now, okay? So your connection with all these people is under false pretenses. The 10 of cups is a beautiful energy. But it can also be a fairly negative energy because it not only incorporates your emotional well-being and ultimate emotional fulfillment, but it also tends to refer to that of all the other people around you as well. And within the 12th house is where we can really get lost in the sauce, okay? 12th house is watery emotional energy ruled by Pisces. The emotions, the feelings, the desires of everybody can get mixed up with your own and then you lose your sense of self. Lost in the sauce, right? But you're emerging out of that this month. At the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Cups. And what allows you to emerge out of that, Sagittarius, is your connection with yourself. Again, Sun and Pluto conjunction, Mars moving through the 12th house. Okay? Following your heart, allowing the empowerment of this conjunction between the Sun and Pluto to really allow you to feel that power, to step into that power, to really be empowered here. All right? Okay. Uh... What else do we want to say, Spirit, about the Ten of Cups here? For Sagittarius. Seven of Cups. Confusion. Options. Yeah. Differing of opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the Sun as your overall energy here, right? Okay. So... What this is talking about here for you, Sagittarius, you have the Ten of Cups in reverse, right? With that has come the Seven of Cups with the Three of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. So focusing on what it is you truly want to work on, really what it is you truly want to be building from. The Three of Pentacles represents self-mastery in many cases. The Seven of Cups represents options or maybe options of an emotional nature. But then the three of, I'm sorry, the eight of wands represents clear trajectory, knowing what it is that you want, seeing your target, having a clear view of your target and aiming at it to hit it. So what this means for you here, especially with the sun at the bottom of the deck and then the page of wands under that to the wheel of fortune, to the magician, okay? Yes, to the five of cups also, but then to the nine of cups. All right, and the Ace of Swords, and then the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so <laughs> what all of this is saying here, Sagittarius, is this is you getting very clear in terms of the options of what it is you want to be working on, what it is you want to be moving forward towards, okay? The Sun, clarity, truth, honesty, realizations, revelations, Page of Wands, very Sagittarian energy in nature. Page of Wands is re-identifying yourself, having a new message to send, having a new creative project or a passion project to embark on, to study, to work on. The Wheel of Fortune is destiny, but is also changing those karmic cycles, okay? Stepping off or stepping out of the karmic hamster wheel, yeah? Um, that goes there. Oh, and this goes there. Right. 
All right. Uh, I want to get I want to get one more general pull. Anything else for Sagittarius from the Tarot here? And then maybe let's see if we can get a little bit of love messages for you. Anything else for Sagittarius? Keep going. Walk away. I mean, the Five of Swords flashed me. Then the uh, oh shoot, what was that last one? I don't remember. I don't remember. But. Um, just keep walking away. Walk away from the damage. Walk away from the drama and destruction. Eight of Pentacles. Keep building, all right? Keep building. Doing what it is you love to do. Doing what it is you know you are meant to do. And then there's the Hierophant. The Hierophant did come out in reverse, though, for Sagittarius Rising. What do we want to say about the Hierophant for Sagittarius, please, Spirit? Yeah, the Five of Wands. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any What else? Hierophant energies for Sagittarius here. Two of Swords. The Moon. You know, um, Sag, I really do feel like this is talking about, yes, okay, yes, okay, cool. So then we come back to your energy, all right? Temperance is the overall energy. Temperance does represent Sagittarius, but temperance also represents balance, realchemizing, or, al or, or alchemy, okay? You have the Hierophant here, which is the status quo, which is uh, the belief systems of everyone else, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, this, that, and the third. What you need to understand, Sagittarius, is that there is always going to be a, a differing of opinion here. Just because society or the status quo says something is one thing, that doesn't necessarily make it true. And oftentimes, the individuals that are in, that are in control in this establishment energy only want you to have access to the information that supports their cause or their mindset or their way of being. But that doesn't make it true. I'm not saying it doesn't have truth to it. I doesn't, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, you know, it wasn't true at one point or it still isn't true at this point or something like that, but it's not the end all be all. There is always more. There is always another way to see it. There is always another way to do things. So if that's what you're facing right now, don't even pay attention to it. Two of swords, five of wands. Why? Because opinions are like assholes, guys. Everybody's got one. And there's always going to be someone out there with a different opinion that's going to come up and try and challenge you. That doesn't mean that that has to stop you. Don't even focus on that. Especially if you're coming to realize in this empowered energy that, you know, what they're saying or that reality is not relevant. Re re uh, uh, relevant to you, then there's no reason for you to have to accept it. Next, you have that, con just con continuing to confirm that, you have the moon with the Ten of Swords. Illusions. Illusions of grandeur in some cases. All right, allow, allow there are going to be people out here that are trying to spread lies, that are trying to confuse you, that are trying to bring in a dark or divergent mind frame or mindset. Don't even focus on that Sagittarius. If it doesn't resonate with you, then just let it be. Just end it. Close the door on that. All right. I do want to get a little bit of a pull here from which one? I'm not really feeling either of these, to be honest. Let's okay. Let's just go. I want to get some closing. I want to get some messages here from the romance angels, and then we'll close out the reading. Yeah. Two more shuffles here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and anything placement for January 2022. What closing message do you have, Spirit, from the romance angels? That's enough. All right. Closing message for Sagittarius, please, Spirit, from the romance angels. What do you want to say to Sagittarius at this time? Yeah, this is a time to have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people. People, there. I, I mean, even though there were going to be people that oppose you, okay, that doesn't mean that you can't have an honest, down-to-earth conversation with people. It's not necessarily to get them to agree with you or to join your side, but some people do honestly want to have a conversation do honestly want to hear things from your point of view and yes they may try to argue with you and they may try to get you to stay on their side but it doesn't really have to be like that it doesn't have to be a topic of con of contention you really could just be talking to each other just to share thoughts and ideas that doesn't mean that anyone is trying to convert anybody to their side or back to the other side you know what i mean okay 
With this, you do have finances and career, but then also religious factors. So this could be one or this could be both. This could be a real spiritual thing for some of you. There could be some religious zealots that are coming your way, or this could be about your finances and career. Uh, whatever it is, from an unconditionally loving point of view, allow yourselves to just have the conversation should they arise, okay? Without trying to convince anybody of anything. You can have a conversation with someone and not try to convince them of something. Just lay it out, lay out the facts or lay it out the way that you see it. Again, not with intentions to get them to see it that way too, but just with intentions to communicate your point of view. That's all. Doesn't have to be a big fight. All right, let's close out this reading with Oracle of the Seven Energies, yeah? Three shuffles here. One. Two. And three. Cool. What messages, closing message do we have for Sagittarius this month? For January 2022, please, Spirit. Closing message for Sagittarius. Card number 21, exposed and revealed. But from your point of view, Sagittarius, this feels so good. It feels so liberating. It literally feels like you can breathe. And I know the words exposed and revealed can be extremely triggering to some people. But I find in my journeys in life so far that the people that have the most trouble with though the energies of being exposed or something being exposed and revealed are the ones that have the most to hide I'm not saying that they don't have their reasons for it and i'm definitely not trying to judge anybody for that everybody's got those skeletons in the closet but some people are hearing those those two words and they're cringing but sagittarius i don't necessarily feel like you're the one cringing I feel like you're like, yes, expose all the things, right? It's come out, it's out now. The truth is out there now, ain't no putting it back. You can't unsee it, you can't unhear it. You can't go back to sleep at this point. So why try? Allow the power of the conjunction between the sun and Pluto to infuse greater cosmic power into your soul. Infinite cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. Right? <laughs> I love you guys so very much. There you have it. I'm going to leave it there. If you are interested in getting a private reading with me, all of the information can be found in the description box below. Also, if you're interested in getting some extra content from me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can also be found in the description box below. I love you all so freaking much. I hope you have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes? Beautimus. Take care. Mm -hmm. ah! Bye.